हेलो एवरीवन टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द नॉन अल्कोहलिक फैटी लिवर डिसीज इन डायबिटीज नाउ लेट्स सी द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एन एफ एल डी नॉन अल्कोहलिक फैटी लिवर डिसीज द एन एफ एल डी इज डिफाइंड एज हिपेटिक स्ट्यूटोसिस डायग्नोस्ड आयदर बाय हिस्टोलॉजी और बाय द इमेजिंग टेक्निक विद द प्रेजेंस ऑफ फॉलोइंग क्राइटेरिया हिपेटिक स्टियोटोसिस मीन्स देर इज अक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ fat in the liver cells known as hepatocytes the first criteria is the hepatocytes should be with macrovascular hep steatosis in more than 5% of the hepatocytes it means out of 100 hepatocytes more than 5 hepatocytes should be with macrovascular steatosis like condition and this should be diagnosed by the histological analysis method or by the proton density fat fraction method the macrovascular steatosis means there is accumulation of a single large fat droplet or smaller well defined fat droplets which occupy the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes and because of this deposition of the fat droplets the nucleus of these hepatocytes move or push towards the periphery however there is some another condition which is known as microvascular steatosis and in this there is deposition of multiple tiny lipid droplets in the hepatocytes but here the nucleus is not displaced or not pushed towards the periphery here the nucleus is located in the center of the cell and apart from this more than 5% of uh, microvascular steatosis like condition there are more than 5.6% of the hepatocyte should be diagnosed with this macrovascular steatosis by the much better diagnostic method known as proton magnetic resonance spectroscopy mrs or by the quantitative fat water selective magnetic resonance imaging method and there should be no secondary cause for the development of this steatosis the second criteria for definition of nfld is there should be no significant alcohol consumption in the person having this nfld the significant alcohol consumption can be defined when there is no ongoing or recent consumption of more than 21 drinks per week for men means not more than 3 drinks per day for men and more than 14 drinks per week or more than 2 week 2 drinks per day for women should be there the third criteria is there should be no any other etiology which causes this liver disease then this condition can be defined as an fld the non alcoholic fatty liver disease is a spectrum of disease which ranges from simple hepatic fat accumulation without inflammation to steato hepatitis like condition to fibrosis cirrhosis and ultimately end stage liver disease this non alcoholic fatty liver disease is a common problem which is seen usually in obese person with metabolic diseases that's why it is also known as metabolic associated fatty liver disease mfld and as the diabetes is also a metabolic disease so the diabetes promotes the development of severe liver disease and that's why the diabetes is associated with high risk of development of cirrhosis of liver and development of hepatocellular carcinoma and it is also seen that the type 2 diabetes mellitus can worsen the course of this non alcoholic fatty liver disease towards end stage liver disease or hepatocellular carcinoma as we have discussed that this nfld is also known as metabolic associated fatty liver disease and it shows a wide spectrum of the liver disease starting from the simple fatty liver known as steatosis which is simple accumulation of the fat in the hepatocytes to non alcoholic steatohepatitis which is a condition where there is a condition of steatosis as well as inflammation is also present and it can also 
present like cirrhosis of the liver which is a condition of irreversible advanced scarring of the liver cells however this nfld or mfld should have always two essential features first is it should be non alcoholic means there should be no any history of linkage of no uh, significant alcohol consumption and there should be always accumulation of fat in the liver cells also known as hepatocytes let's discuss about the magnitude of this non alcoholic fatty liver disease it is the most common cause for any abnormal liver function test this nfld can affect approx 10 to 25% of the population however as we know that this nfld easily targets the obese population so it can present in 55 to 75% of the obese population about 2.6% of the children are affected with nfld and the 25 to 50% of the obese children children who are obese can have this condition of nfld about 17 to 32% of urban population in south india is found to be have nfld and about 55 to 87% of the person who are having diabetes are affected with this nfld we can better understand about the spectrum of this non alcoholic fatty liver disease in this diagram here we can see that this nfld is only accumulation of fat in the liver cells which can progress towards the nsh non alcoholic steatohepatitis where there is accumulation of fat as well as there is presence of inflammation of the liver cells it can also present like fibrosis of the liver cells and ultimately it can develop as cirrhosis of liver where we can see the scarring of the liver cells the spectrum or nfld can also better understand with this diagram now let's discuss about the pathogenesis of this nfld so any individual with type 2 diabetes mellitus they are susceptible for the development of cardiovascular diseases development of insulin resistance insulin resistance is a condition when the cells in the muscles fat and liver don't respond to the insulin and they can't easily take up the glucose from the blood and it ultimately causes the increase in the blood sugar level the type 2 diabetes mellitus can are also susceptible to develop the dyslipidemia which can be shown as higher level of triglyceridemia and lower level of hdl cholesterol the type 2 diabetes mellitus also influence to develop the liver diseases and this liver diseases itself worsens the condition of insulin resistance in any patient with diabetes and it can also affect the insulin clearance from the body now let's discuss the linkage between the development of nfld and metabolic syndrome as we know that the nfld is one of the hepatic manifestation of the hepat metabolic syndrome which also includes the diabetes mellitus and the basic defect behind this nfld development is the development of insulin resistance which we have already discussed that there is resistance of intake of blood sugar into the muscles fat and liver liver cells the most frequent risk factor for development of this insulin resistance is obesity and most common obesity is the abnormal obesity which affects and leads to development of the insulin resistance if the non alcoholic fatty liver disease is not controlled or not treated in the early stage it can show as the presence of inflammation cell necrosis the perilobular fibrosis and it can also lead to development of cirrhosis which is irreversible scarring of the hepatocytes the nfld have higher risk for development of cardiovascular diseases as the severe liver diseases 
which can be a consequence of NFLD, can encourage the atherogenic impedance for development of cardiovascular diseases by the hyperlipidemia or by the hyperglycemia like conditions in any patient with NFLD. Here in this picture, we can see how this NFLD like condition can lead to the development of insulin resistance, which can cause the development of hyperinsulinemia, adipocyte dysfunction, hyperglycemia, and ultimately this healthy liver can go towards the fatty liver development development of NSH and ultimately it can move towards the development of the end stage liver disease. Now let's see who can be the high risk groups for the development of NFLD. So NFLD can develop more in the males as compared to the females, individuals with diabetes, individual with dyslipidemia, those who are having higher abdominal obesity and the obese children where the weight is more than 95 percent as compared to the age and sex apart from that there are various other risk factors which can lead to the development to the nfld these are shown in this diagram now let's discuss about the clinical feature of nfld about 90 percent cases of nfld are obese about 35 to 50 percent of NFLD cases have acanthosis nigricans. This acanthosis nigricans is a condition that causes areas of dark, thick, velvety skin in body folds and creases. And this acanthosis nigricans is usually seen in armpits, groin, and neck region. About 35 to 50 percent have enlarged liver. And this is usually non-tender, but sometimes it is associated with dragging sensation in the upper abdomen. When the liver is palpated, it is usually feel like normal, but if very large amount of deposition of fat is there in the liver, so it is quite easily uh, palpable, quite easily felt as soft rounded edge can be felt easily. NFLD can be associated with other comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and sleep apnea. Now let's discuss about the diagnostic method of NFLD. Firstly, we will discuss about the non-invasive test or methods used to diagnose the NFLD. For steatosis, the ultrasound is the preferred first-line investigation of choice in primary care however the MRI is the gold standard but MRI is very much expensive and less available if the imaging method is not available then we can use scoring systems to diagnose steatosis which include fatty liver index steato test and NFLD liver fatty score can be used in case of non-alcoholic steato hepatitis no non-invasive test can better distinguish NSH from the steatosis. So in that condition, for confirmation of diagnosis, biopsy is required. For diagnosis of fibrosis and cirrhosis, the biomarkers and scores of fibrosis along with elastography can be used where, the, where there is low risk of progression of such patient to cirrhosis and fibrosis. However, uh, scoring systems like NFLD fibrosis score, FIB4 and commercial test like FibroTest, Fibrometer, ELF can be used. However, this scoring system or this test are not as reliable if the disease is in advanced stage of fibrosis and cirrhosis. So in that condition, the ultimate method which can be utilized for diagnosis is liver biopsy. Now let's discuss the method of liver biopsy as diagnostic method of NFLD. So this liver biopsy is essential for reliably differentiating between the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease from non-alcoholic steatohepatitis as we have already discussed. Usually the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease 
it encompasses, uh, encompasses steatosis only alone, deposition of fat in the liver alone, or it can be present as steatosis with lobular or portal inflammation but without ballooning, or it can represent as steatosis with ballooning but without inflammation. However, in case of NASH, the diagnosis is confirmed when there is joint presence of all these three factors like steatosis as well as ballooning as well as lobular inflammation should be there. Apart from this, the, there are some other histological uh, features for diagnosis of NSH which include portal inflammation, the polymorphonuclear infiltrates, presence of mallory dank bodies, the apoptotic bodies, clear vacuolated nuclei will be there, microvascular steatosis can be there in case of NSH and there will be presence of mega mitochondria in such kind of patients. Here in this slide, we can see the diagnostic algorithm uh, for the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In all cases of NFLD, we should always exclude the secondary causes of fatty liver, including the fatty liver due to the chronic alcohol consumption, which uh, includes the alcohol intake more than 30 gram per day in case of men and more than 20 gram per day in case of women. Now let's discuss about the differential diagnosis of fatty liver, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The differential diagnosis of NFLD can be broadly divided into two categories. The disease or illnesses which represent as macrovesicular steatosis and the second category belongs to disease or illnesses which represent like microvesicular steatosis. The macrovesicular steatosis can be presented by the significant alcohol consumption, viral hepatitis B or C, the some steatogenic medications like amiodarone, athotrexate, tamoxifen and GCTS. GCTS. Hemochromatomesis can also show features of macrovesicular steatosis, the autoimmune hepatitis, celiac disease, Wilson's disease, A beta lipoproteinemia hypo beta lipoproteinemia the lipoatrophy or lipodystrophy few surgeries can also present as macrovesicular steatosis which include bilio pancreatic diversion and jejunoileal bypass and in case of starvation and parenteral nutrition we can find the macrovesicular steatosis where we need to differentiate it from the nfld there are few diseases or illnesses which represent like microvesicular steatosis which include Ray syndrome, few medications like Valproate and ART, antiretroviral therapy. In case of acute fatty liver of pregnancy, we need to differentiate it from NFLD, HELP syndrome and in such few inborn errors of metabolism, we can find such microvesicular steatosis. Let's discuss about the treatment options for the NFLD. Approx 5 to 10 percent of weight loss can cause about 25 percent regression in condition of steatosis in one year. However, too much rapid weight loss should be avoided as it can worsen the liver function test. Vitamin A E can be given at a dose of 800 international unit per day as it has been seen that it can improve the liver enzymes. The condition of steatosis can be improved, inflammation and ballooning can also be treated. But there are laser effects in case of condition of type 2 diabetes mellitus with NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. We should consider of prescribing metformin as the metformin is not associated with definitive improvement in liver histology in case of NSH. Pioglitazone has been seen a very effective role in biopsy proven NSH with type 2 diabetes mellitus as it can improve all histological features of NSH and it induces resolution. GLP-1 receptor agonist and SGLT-2 inhibitors. These medica medications has 
have also been shown to reduce the condition of steatosis as well as fibrosis in NAFLD. Statin can also be safely given in a condition of NASH. Only we should not recommend it, this statin if there is any decompensated cirrhosis like condition is present. Apart from this above treatment option, we should also think about some other treatment methods options which includes the pantoxifiline, omega-3 fatty acid and metabolic surgery. Now we have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and share this with others.